Pro Wrestling Podcast. What does that mean? Shut up! Listen up, wrestling fans. What else? You- what else? Hit him right in the nuts. What does that mean? Broken bones. Severed spines. Harper. Rowan. Bludgeon Brothers. What else? What else? The best pro wrestling podcast, of course. <laughs> this is the best pro wrestling podcast where we talk about the best pro wrestling on the planet. Or you can follow us on Twitter at BPW Podcast. Why I'm starting with a Twitter plug, uh, I don't know. Uh, like I said, my <laughs> name's Tommy Stryker, and uh, we're just fans talking about pro wrestling. And uh, we try to keep it positive. We talk about what we like, and uh, well, we get we get into some little a little negativity here and there. Just but a little. We try not to too much because that's what most wrestling podcasts are just people bitching about wrestling joining us this joining me this week (laughs) as always is taco what up joe's here howdy and uh we're coming off of hell in a cell we got to talk about that we'll talk uh monday night raw and smackdown of course uh we'll talk a little bit of lucha underground we're always a week behind on lucha Mm -hmm. underground but uh episode two of uh ultima lucha trace we'll go through that and uh nxt this week uh, we just got done watching that so we can kind of move through that kind of quickly not a ton to divulge or to, to digest there but uh uh, let's start with a little bit of uh, news, shall we? Uh, uh, the uh, Pro Wrestling News. We have quite a bit of news for you. News, 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 news. 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 <laughs> a couple of interesting uh, items. Uh, Neville uh, walked out on Monday Night Raw. Sounds like he wants his release. Mm. All the New Japan and indie guys on Twitter are going crazy <laughs> saying, Come on over, <laughs> Neville. Come on over and be Pac again. So, yeah, sounds like uh, Neville didn't like the creative direction or whatever was supposed to maybe not lose to Enzo, but he certainly wasn't going to get the title back. Uh, but who knows if he's been uh, disgruntled for a while. Any, what are your thoughts on the situation? Uh, you, I, I, I mean, it sucks for WWE in my mind, but, I mean, it does open up a lot of doors for Neville. He's being – I think it's the same thing as Austin Aries. They just don't want to be labeled as – the top guy of the cruiserweights. They know their size and everything, but they're, they know they're better than that. And they feel like they should be more successful. Yeah. And that two Oh five show. I mean, I know you've been watching it a little bit more taco, but I just can't get into it. And it feels like there's a glass ceiling. That's the most interesting Neville has been in his whole WWE career. Uh, what else? Even in NXT. So it's just like, come on, man, look at you. Like he's a phenomenal athlete, but he doesn't scream world champion to me he's kind of like someone who's like an eddie guerrero who has to you have to fight for that spot like if you want to be there you have to do some extra shit and be patient and work hard and he was really he really developed a really good fucking character out with the king of the cruiserweights and everything and you know I, that is something he could have brought to the main roster and been a threat with <laughs> the old the old neville we saw you know in nxt and previous the good guy Nah, he's a joke. <laughs> I did kind of like his his run on top with like his in, in back in NXT. Uh, that feud he had with Sami Zayn was nice when he had the when they were going back and forth for the NXT yeah. championship. But yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But there's definitely a, a glass ceiling to the to the to the 205 Live brand, and I think just the idea of fucking putting Enzo on there on top. I think maybe but it was he such had a good sacrifice that, that he did. Showed you know showed. You know him, the cruiserweights, and the audience that he really is the king of the cruiserweights when he storms down that fucking ramp and beats the shit out of Enzo and forfeits his opportunity to get that belt back. That's how fucking pissed he but was. But then again, you got their now their big the big push for two hundred five is Enzo cutting everybody in the cruiserweight division down mm-hmm. constantly, and they and then and then and, and he's got the championship until Neville walks out and they decide to have put him in the ring with Callisto, and since it's Eddie Guerrero's birthday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they give Callisto the championship. Yeah. So, but we'll get into more of that uh, when we talk uh, uh, the rest of Monday Night Raw. Other news: Jimmy Jacobs, who was uh, part of the uh, uh, writers, uh, not the not the, somewhat the creative, but I think he was more on the producers' side okay. of things, but part of uh, producing what goes on inside the rings with the wrestlers. 
Uh, anyway, he got in trouble for Instagramming a photo of him uh, with the Bullet Club guys mm-hmm. when they did the uh, the uh, invasion angle, the invasion being the elite episode on their YouTube channel uh, from last week or, or a couple weeks ago, whatever Think it was. Think he used the hashtag Bullet Club Invasion too or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, B- B- hashtag BC Invasion, all of that. Uh, the, the thing is here is that him losing his job over it, I think that's a mistake. I think that's stupid. Yeah. I think it's WWE taking this whole thing way too seriously. Um, the cease and desist letter, <laughs> you know, actually for real sending one. And then Jimmy Jacobs shouldn't lose his job. I mean, we've seen WWE guys taking pictures with indie guys before, and it hasn't been a problem. Now, I could see them wanting to make an example, and that's probably obviously what that is mm-hmm. here with Jimmy Jacobs saying, let's stop taking pictures with indie guys, especially popular ones like Bullet Club guys. Well, I think at one point, too, like if it's your friends or your amigos and you're like, oh, fuck, good to see these guys again. And that's all cool. it was. But when you do put like hashtag Bullet Club Invasion or whatever, it's kind of like, oh, hey, I work for Coke, but oh, yeah, I secretly like Diet Pepsi, like... Yeah, yes and no. But, Disgusting. But, <laughs> but just because, I mean, uh, New Japan and Bullet Club, yes, they're very popular on the independent level, but nowhere near any kind of, it's not like WCW back in the day. The, the level of competition no. here is so, I mean, compared to WWE, it's just, it's so back it's, burner. Or it's it's a, such a small comparison. It's kind of funny to think that, Years ago, they were fucking taking JR out of the intro and getting pissed at people for showing up at, like, UFC events and, you know, (laughs) showing up at UFC on camera. And Uh, now they're just back and forth with each other, and Bullet Club is getting his attention now. So it's, like, it's kind of interesting what's going on. You know what? what? And it was, like, the whole cease and desist thing, too, when you have, you know. It's just giving them more attention. It is. (laughs) But when you have them poking the bear and you know with these fake cease and desist it's like okay you you want one here's one you can have like yeah, yeah. You, what do you expect <laughs> right. well it's, it's, w, if wwe wants to they should just not acknowledge them and that would you know but the fact that they're acknowledging them mm. giving them real cease and desist <laughs> uh, you know firing jimmy jacobs or whatever it is you know the, all of that just gives more attention to them puts more eyeballs on them what's going on over here there's a shiny bright light over here flashing what's <laughs> going on over here so oh uh, yeah all it's doing is, is giving them more atten- attention so i guess uh, good for the bullet club and and hopefully i'm sure jimmy jacobs will be fine he'll end up probably back at ring of honor or, or whatever doing a, a similar uh, role or whatever. Pop, um, yeah. So mm-hmm. hopefully he still gets a, a good something good for for himself comes out of this. Hopefully, yeah. obviously it's probably not going to be as good as whatever his WWE deal is. So, but that's that's very Sky unfortunate. That one. So yeah, it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But you know they made an example out of him. So you're not going to get any more fun uh, Instagram and Twitter <laughs> pictures with uh, indie guys and WWE guys. So kind of is what it is. All right, let's get into uh, let's get into SmackDown and Hell in a Cell, shall we? SmackDown Live. I can be a superhero. I'm going to make this a tag team match. Tag team match. Hell in the Cell, or Hell in a Cell, a fun show. Uh, let, let's let's jump right to that main event: uh, Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens. What does that mean? It didn't feel mm-hmm. like a wrestling match, really. You know <laughs> what else? <laughs> it, it was, a, it was it's just a brawl. It was, it was a brawl, but it was it was. Does it was, Shane McMahon ever feel like a wrestling match? No, ever. it doesn't. No. And, and Shane McMahon throwing them. I mean, his stuff looked a little bit better. I mean, better than uh, some of the really shitty stuff that it's looked like in the past. What else? <laughs> but uh, it, 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 Kevin it, Kevin Owens made the best of the situation, I think, that he was in and mm. tried to make uh, Shane McMahon look as good as he could. Uh that shit where they were on top of the cage, that was whole and they shit. kept they kept slamming each other on that one fucking spot. Yo. It was just like, okay, so either something's going on here, or that's the one they've really fucking reinforced. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, they trust that one. So that- I gotta give mad props to uh, uh, whoever set up the. Thought out the the pro, the set design though with them on top of the cell and the the hell in the cell logo in the background oh, it just yeah, sure. it was just phenomenal like camera work came out of that where it's just you know those two guys on top of the cage and just the fire banner like behind <laughs> them it was badass 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, Sami Zayn making the big save at the end. Uh, I'm kind of jumping around here, but I uh, before we kind of get to the, to the finish and all that. I like how I kind of said that last week's episode. Uh, yeah, good. <laughs> kind of joked about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that was the thing is they definitely kind of teased that with, uh, you know, Zayn trying to give Shane the advice backstage mm-hmm. and Shane blowing him off. <laughs> and, of course, that turned out to be Sammy's kind of his reasoning. It was like, well, this guy brings me to fucking SmackDown to give me the, quote, opportunity. And then he's out there taking main event matches <laughs> and ignoring me. So fuck this guy. Yeah. Well, so, and didn't he get blown off by, like, Daniel Bryan? Because, like, Daniel Bryan had a cell phone call. I can't remember. But, like, t- like two, maybe three weeks ago that sure. happened as well. You know that's going to come up sooner or later as sure, well. Sure. If, if, if they're smart about it. About it and I like the direction they're going with so, it. So yeah, Sammy's got his reasons. It's that WWE narrative that that I hate. That uh, you know, it, it's basically advantage to the heels because uh, you have to do whatever you got to do to get a win. Mm-hmm. And so uh, Sammy, using that logic, decided, well, I got I got to turn. I got to be an asshole because being the nice guy isn't going to work around here. It's true though. Every champ is a heel right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and it sucks. SmackDown sucks. <laughs> I mean, I mean look, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm being very negative here, <laughs> but I mean, look, you got Jinder on top. Ugh. You got you, you got the, the Natty's shit. a heel. Natty's a heel, and you got her running away from her match. Baron Corbin with the U.S. title. We're gonna we're gonna get into all of this here. <laughs> this is, I mean, oh my God, the, the skull duggery. Skull duggery was a uh, uh, brunt. But back to Hell in a Cell. I like the I like the uh, Kevin Owens, the chicken shit. Uh, getting Shane McMahon knocked down, uh, uh, threatening to g- jump off the barricade onto Shane McMahon. Oh, that's not that's not dastardly enough. I'm going to go to the top of the cage. So <laughs> goes to the top, but he can't doesn't quite have the guts to jump off the Couldn't cage. Do uh, it. Two two awesome things about that are the, this idea that Kevin Owens uh, it would be really cool to see Kevin Owens jump off the cage onto Shane McMahon, and the crowd would pop, and everybody would think it was awesome. But because he's such a smart heel, he goes up there, doesn't jump off because he's a coward and a fucknut, and <laughs> <laughs> so Shane McMahon climbs up there and, and, and takes care of business. So I liked that aspect uh, of the match. So and we kind of talked about the of the Sami Zayn stuff already, and mm. and uh, his excuses that he gave in the ring on on SmackDown. So that's kind of what it I was. like it. Oh man. I mean, do they I mean, are they going for individual titles themselves? Do they insert themselves into the tag division at all? I think it's going to be a lot like what uh, Jericho and uh, Kevin Owens were doing uh, oh. last year where it's just kind of one helping the other. So whether it's for the uh, the major championship or the US title, which is weird because both of those are on heels now. So I know Owens needs to uh, um get a tag title though. He's held Everything except for WWE Championship and a tag title. If well, you think about it, you got to reward Zayn for turning heel now, so you might as well <laughs> give him a championship. So, and uh, now that the uh, Usos kind of turned babyface a little bit in their uh, in their respect promo for mm-hmm. the uh, for the New Day on on SmackDown, uh, let's get into that match because that was the right. that was the other Hell in a Cell <clears throat> match, me, match of the night. Awesome match, uh, New Day uh, uh, and the Usos. In I the like Hell the combo, in... Xavier Woods and Big E. Yeah, 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 and fuck. And Big E just murdering them himself with the <laughs> dives again. Yeah, uh, everybody keeps pleading with Big E to stop doing the dives. He has stopped for the most part doing them in like meaning meaningless TV matches. Yep. But yeah, doing them into the cell here was was crazy. Uh, they, we got multiple trombones in the match. We have <laughs> multiple a, Francesca's. A, a cowbell, a gong comes out. Uh, uh, Biggie does the big urinagi. I loved that aspect too of New Day hiding some of their own shit under the ring before yeah. their match too, because it's like the, the, fuck the, yeah, they were down for this. The, they were ready for war. The rainbow kendo sticks. Yep. <laughs> yeah, uh, they do the big uh, the big urinagi off the apron onto Xavier Woods' knees. Uh, at one point, they trap an USO in the corner with kendo sticks. Yeah. Yes. That was so. Who thought of that? Yeah, unique original <laughs> stuff. That was really awesome. Love that. What else? Uh, <laughs> the uh, the Usos uh, handcuff uh, Xavier Woods to the post. I love that spot because it was like they they had the the, the, the long chain handcuff, mm-hmm. so it was enough so that he could get his arms up around the back of the post, or whatever. But he's kind of hanging outside onto the on the steps, yeah. and they just you know go at him with the kendo sticks into his ribs. It or actually, whatever. it brought me back to the few good matches we got out of that like two year long John Cena. Randy Orton, there was a 60 man Iron Man match that was no disqualification. He mm-hmm. did, Randy Orton did the same thing to Cena, just fucking throttled his ass. It was fun. Gross. It brought me back. 
And then going into the the finish, Woods just taking in an un- uncomfortable damn. amount of kendo stick shots, but just showing that that fighting spirit yep. and, and and just a great uh, just a great showing between the two Fuck teams. Yeah. And then that the promo, the follow up from SmackDown, the the Usos just saying, "Look, man, it's it's us two teams. Everybody else, uh, everybody else sucks." <laughs> <laughs> and that's literally what they what, what one of the Usos said. Is, I think I thought I had the. Uh, I thought I had that the everybody sucks thing here, but uh, I guess I don't. Let me let me look it up here and see if I can find it. If they take a minute here. But I I, I dug too that Kofi didn't have any involvement with the Hell in a Cell. It, you know, right. being out there because it's very possible that you know them being the new day they can get away with that kind of shit. So it, I, it was dope that it stayed inside the cage and it's just like um. Fucking such unique minds going at that. You know, nice change of pace for such a crazy fucking match yeah yeah i can't find that sound bite but anyway yeah that yeah just yeah a a fun awesome match uh the usos calling everybody else out (laughs) telling everybody else they suck uh the the, 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 it was it was fun uh on smackdown when uh uh, those two teams showing each other the respect after the match but then it was kind of the idiocy of it uh, uh, it's kind of like what we complain about with the with the women's division just throwing everybody out there again uh again we've been we've been promised fashion files we got promised uh, the uh, uh what pulp was fashion yes wh- where was that so oh we even get that nope, nope. <laughs> i missed smackdown for the listeners so that's, that's i'm kind of okay. getting filled in as we go yeah i was that's- kind of disappointed so, but we got a, a four way tag. Well, it was the classic thing where those the, the the New Day and the Usos are in the ring, going back and forth with the, with this respect, telling and the Usos saying all the teams in the back suck. <laughs> so all the teams in the back, except for the Bludgeon Brothers, we'll get to them. <laughs> the, the, all the teams come out and they get thrown into a uh, into a four way. Holla! I'm going to make this a tag team match for, for the number one contendership. Uh, that was a fun, uh, a fun number one contendership match. Mm-hmm. It was decent, uh, but it was uh, who won that one? It was uh, uh, G- uh, Gable and Benjamin uh, getting the win over uh, over Brizongo. So even though we're kind of building up Brizongo, they're losing the number one contenders match. But the nice, I liked the sequence at the end of the match where it was kind of Brizongo and Gable and Benjamin going back and forth. Gable mm-hmm. and Benjamin getting the best. Uh, of the two there. So I like Gable and Benjamin going for the title shot next. Uh, we don't really have an answer for what's next for the New Day. We kind of speculated maybe a singles uh, run for maybe one of those guys, yeah. but uh, we didn't really get anything more on, on SmackDown. What do you want to see out of the New Day next? Honestly, I mean, it, it seems goofy as hell, but throw them with Brizongo now that they're not the number one ta- you know, tag team contenders. They'll have a lot of fun with each other. Videos, vignettes, you know, in-ring confrontations. Let's have some fun with it. Well, and of course, we have the new tag team debuting. Uh, <laughs> Eric Rowan and uh, uh, Ha Ha Clinton Dix are back. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. <laughs> uh, uh, Rowan and Harper are back. There you Broken go. bones. Severed spines. Harper. Rowan. Bludgeon Brothers. I, I, I laughed. I laughed so hard. <laughs> it's so fucking cartoony. The fucking Halloween hammers that they have. These giant bludgeoning hammers. <laughs> They they they're wearing it's it's weird whoever designs like Bray Wyatt p- pants uh, uh Baron Corbin's outfits mm, these guys they like the patches they they're they're all the same <laughs> <laughs> the, the, these hooded things he's got the mask on at first breathing like Darth Vader the music actually in the on second viewing watching that again with you guys I noticed that the breathing was fake and it went like one or two breaths too long right right mm-hmm. it was. Oh, Badly edited. Oh, bad. <laughs> it was bad. And then, yeah, uh, like when 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 uh, when Rowan uh, he's like broken or uh, severed spines, and then he kind of looks around for a minute. It's just kind of amateur hour, and, <laughs> and then they say they do they do the uh, the the the, uh, the perfectly timed blood bludgeon brothers. But then they just keep the camera on them for like ten minutes afterwards. <laughs> just like just yeah, so Rowan scary. had that look like ah. Uh. <laughs> Can I end this? I gotta pee. We good? Oh, uh, it's so. Th- this might be so bad that it's good. You know, I it, cause if it's with Brizongo, uh, I'm gonna hold out for it. <laughs> 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 I'm getting excited now. Except Brizongo has Ascension on their side, like Lost Puppy Dogs. Like, uh. <laughs> I'm for this. Oh man, but. <laughs> 
if if anybody could get this over, I'm thinking Eric Rowan might be or not Rowan uh, Harper. Mm. Harper might be able to pull this off, but I don't have any faith in Eric Rowan <laughs> though. So I guess we'll see. But uh, anyway, <laughs> fucking the Bludgeon Brothers. <laughs> Bludgeon <laughs> Brothers. <laughs> did they actually do that fashion files at the pay per view then? Yeah, there yeah. Was, there, yeah, they did something. I can't remember what it was now. Let me see. What was my, the uh, 2B thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah and this engine came in wearing the mask and shit. Come on, well, yeah, guys. Because they solved, just said no. They solved case 2B, but then Ascension bring in a tube, 2B, tube, uh, 2B, tube. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but then they want to be friends, and the, they have a, the, they have a briefcase, and that the, the, it was the glowing briefcase that was supposed to lead to pulp fashion. And but they that, arrested the wrong guys. That never happened, yeah, uh, of course, so. Uh, other stuff from Hell in a Cell. Uh, Orton beats Rusev, unfortunately, uh, after Rusev Dumb. Count- counters the RKO into sad the uh, alkaline. Uh, Corbin win the, won the U.S. title, and there was there was a little bit of uh, skull duggery. <laughs> not not necessary, but it was it was AJ hitting his finisher, the phenomenal forearm on mm-hmm. Ty Dillinger, and then Corbin knocking AJ out so he could get the pin. But then <laughs> the follow up on SmackDown, like they protected they protected. AJ Styles in the finish uh, on the pay per view. Come back to SmackDown and he pins him clean in the middle <laughs> with the fucking end of days. It was after that that he did that. Uh, was it a title rematch? Yeah, they, yeah. it was, oh, a, it was yeah. a U.S. title rematch on SmackDown. How did Corbin look? Uh, fucking AJ made him look like a million bucks. Okay, exactly. Man. That's the thing is whether or not AJ was losing, it still didn't look that bad. Uh, AJ beat the shit out of him. His strikes looked solid. And you know he he countered that slide gimmick that he does outside of the ring with like yeah. a running fucking drop kick to, okay. to the outside, fucking running Corbin over the announce table and shit. And then uh, going into the finish, one of the things was is, is AJ was kind of running at him on the apron, uh, uh, kind of on the outside, and Corbin fucking slams him off the apron. He comes down like hard on his hip, and they went right into the to, to the finish after that. So they yeah. could, they could kind of work an injury angle or something there. Or, you know, the excuse that he you know slammed him onto the floor going into the end of days back in the ring, and that's kind of... It, it, it wasn't technically... Skullduggery. But you could almost make the excuse... Fuck that, let's get AJ out of that picture now. But yeah, AJ's out of that picture. Put Ty in there, make that going on. So let's rebuild AJ, get him back into the main event picture. Yes. Uh, hopefully that's the, the direction uh, they're going, and hopefully they get Jinder out of there. The uh, Jinder-Nakamura match was uh, nothing much to, uh, to talk it about. It wasn't even neat. No, it's... It, uh, it was a slight improvement over the, match. the SummerSlam match, but uh, it, was, it was a match. Yeah, it was Jinder winning with the Coloss again. The uh, the distraction finish with distraction. The- Too many distractions. The, the referee finally ejects the goddamn Singh brothers, <laughs> but he's got his back turned. He's, he's distracted anyway. Kids, see the other shenanigans going on. Whatever it is, so uh, just more of that. <clears throat> And we touched on the Charlotte Natalia match. Uh, it was a good match until mm-hmm. that awful finish where Natalia yeah. just gets herself disqualified. And I kind of understand. Uh, here's the thing: is I kind of understand the Natalia Charlotte finish and kind of the Jinder Nakamura finish because this show Hell in a Cell the story was really the main event. Yeah. So those two just kind of being non-factors or whatever, but it added to kind of the overall disappointment and the overall. Oh fuck, SmackDown factor <laughs> of it too, you know. Uh, I don't know. I wasn't really turned away just because. I don't know. We start. We were started off the whole night it's just so stimulated with that New Day USO match that it was. It, you know the the title was itself Hell in a Cell. You know, uh, so that's the focus of the night. You, you know, and like we said, uh, we were talking about last week. I was hoping for a clean finish, Natty, on this one, or Natty to get the clean finish on it. And you're like, that shit's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that's and that's how that's why I wasn't too disappointed with it because we, last week we were all like, yeah, we kind of want Natty to win, but we all were like, but Charlotte's probably going to get the win with mm-hmm. all this stuff going on, and I just uh, it just didn't bother me that as much. I yeah, guess, and and I, I like that it keeps this this going, and we mm-hmm. can have those two in an epic. match match at some point that's i really want a good epic match out of those Mm -hmm. two because i know they can bring it so uh, on a on a show like this where they're not really the focal point i don't i guess i don't really mind this finish because you can come back to it so come back to it give us more of a story can build up to it yeah yeah give us those two can deliver a main event 
awesome match, whether it's on SmackDown or a pay-per-view. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think we're going to get it pay-per-view-wise because the next pay-per-view is, is uh, 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 Survivor Series at this point. So uh, we got a long time between now and uh-huh. then, so they can build this up for a big uh, SmackDown TV main event. And that's I'd, I'd really like to see that out of those two. So yeah. uh, Bobby Roode versus Dolph Ziggler. Again, pretty much what we expected. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect Roode to get a win with holding the tights. Uh, so <laughs> I like the, that, the, too. So but the promo coming back to it uh, on Tuesday. Kind of what he was doing in NXT, though, kind of came in, uh, ooh, Bobby Roode, and then just <laughs> slowly became that heel. And, right, right. You know, right. that was one of the only things I really saw from SmackDown was him fucking up his lines, and it's just, he's not a good baby face. I, yeah, that's yeah, the, the The promo wasn't great, but again, when you're, when you're, when you're just doing scripted promos mm-hmm. and you're not going off the top of your head, shit like that's going to happen, I guess. But, uh, well, and it's with Dolph Ziggler. So. Yeah, anyway, that's the thing is the, is the whole thing was dead on arrival anyway. <laughs> it was when the when the when the heel Dolph Ziggler comes out and makes a great point. Well, you held the tights. It's like, well, now I guess Ziggler's right, so that sucks. And then they do the hey, tease. The heels like, always make the good points and the right points. They're <laughs> always right. Yeah, that's that's another problem. Too. Absolutely right. All right, let's move along and talk some Monday Night Raw, shall we? Change the subject. Monday Night Raw. Point, I don't even. F- I feel like I'm. I, I missed. I, I can't even remember Monday Night Raw. It was like it was. There was so much been going on between King of Pro Wrestling, God, and SmackDown, and and, and and everything else. We watched uh, NXT today. Oh, but, uh, yes, sir. Uh, raw, 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 raw. raw, raw. raw. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Okay. Well, the big the big story coming out of Raw was the Shield reuniting, mm. uh, taking out Miz and the Mizzies and all of that. Uh, Roman Reigns right now has like. Like this like glow about him like he just got fucked and it's looking good <laughs> on TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and him hanging out with Ambrose and, and Rollins backstage and looking R- Rollins looking at at at, at uh, uh, Reigns like he like he's, you know the, the last couple of weeks he's just this glow about him where it's just you know since the John Cena match really it's just this glow about him has been going on and and he feels a little bit looser looser and like uh, that that promo he cut out when you know Ross uh, started where uh, oh the Shield rumors oh who who the fuck's as the rumors, you know, like it just it 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 felt so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I should say the uh, the Shield uh, confronting oh, Braun Strowman after he beats the shit out of Matt Hardy with the uh, running power slam. They confront him and put him through the table, and they have their brand new T-shirts out already. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brought the three pack, brought that up on Twitter, saying they just got back together and boom, already T-shirts. So money, uh, baby. Yeah, yeah, money. Kind of kind of funny there. Uh, but yeah, I'm uh, the, the the shield reunion thing. It's probably the mic there, Taco. Just tap the. There you go. There you go. Anyway, tap it in. Just tap it in. Uh, uh, the, the shield thing. It feels good, right? It's uh, feels uh, Roman's back in the right spot. Uh, it's a better position for uh, Ambrose mm-hmm. and Rollins right away. Well, and they have a lot more trust. I mean, how many how many more years experience they have compared to when they were just coming in? They're going to give them a lot of leeway with this. I think. And uh, they're really building up this uh, this uh, tables, ladders, and chairs card coming up here in a uh, in a couple of weeks on the twenty second, right here in Minneapolis. By Woo! the way, uh, I'm, I'm I'm using all my pro wrestling money in Chicago this yes, weekend. Sir. Money Make well sure you spent. Check out Strong Honor this week if you want to hear about because I'm going to preview all that shit that's going on in Chicago, Ring of Honor, AAW. Plus, we're going to talk uh, Ring of Honor TV and New Japan uh, over on Strong Honor this week. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm saving all my money for Hell Chicago, yeah. but. Uh, uh, hopefully you guys can go and check out uh, check out TLC. But yeah, it's going to be the Miz and uh, Sheamus and C- mm. Cesaro wow. teaming up with Braun Strowman <laughs> against the Shield. So that should be a hell of a spectacle. All right, uh, and it's a TLC match, right? Right. Well, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I'm yeah. Sure, it is. Yeah, TLC that's, match. It's going to be fucking insane. So between that, you got the debut of Oscar. We got the number one contender for that. That was such a weird fucking deal. <laughs> like 
all the, they do this the thing where all the women are, 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 are catty with each other in the back. No, I want to face the woman that can't be defeated. They, they all want to face us. <laughs> and a, a, a Corey Graves on commentary, I have no idea why any of these women want to face <laughs> Oscar. At least he made sense. So I liked that. But we had the uh, the five way, and it was uh, it was Emma winning it, wasn't it? Where yeah. I put my, uh, so I like Emma winning it because she's good, mm-hmm. good in the ring, and she can put on a really good showcase match for Oscar. Yeah. Could, like if it was Dana Brooke or somebody, it would just be a shit show. You know, right. well, wasn't uh, Emma that her debut match and and it, her first big. Uh, NXT match like pay per view might very well be. I don't recall at this. point. I just know she did. Emma lost to her at some point at an NXT. Everybody, pay-over. everybody lost. Are you sure, Joe? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm like 99 percent sure. So, but yeah, that's a, you five bucks. <laughs> so, but I'm looking looking forward to uh, to Oscar and, yeah. and Emma. That should be really good. Uh, the Mickey James and Bliss promo segment was Alexa Bliss mm-hmm. uh, was pretty good. You know, uh, Mickey just look, looking like she's coming off the off the off the cuff. You know. Uh, again, the opposite of the Bobby Roode promo. <laughs> she doesn't like, come across like she's de- delivering uh, scripted lines. She you know, made fun of cheap extensions and peach hair dye, called her biscuit butt. Uh, <laughs> you had the crowd chanting biscuit butt at, at Alexa Bliss. So uh, I, I really enjoyed that segment. Kind of oh, Mickey yeah. getting a little bit back after all the, the bullshit with the with the, 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 the pens and the walker. Yeah, it's the... just been her taking shit for weeks now. Yeah, it's yeah. nice to you see know, her get involved. With her, you know past um issues with the WWE. I, I I don't think they would have done that without her okaying that. <laughs> uh, well yeah, sure. Uh, hopefully. You know, like, hopefully. Ho- hopefully, but, but you know, I th- I feel like she'd be in a better spot too where she would say no to something if she was really uncomfortable with it, especially with how out against her previous storyline she's been. Yeah, yeah. So but you know like I, you'd I, hope so, but God I, it should definitely have been better, but I don't know, it, it, the, the payoff this week was almost worth it. <laughs> Uh, we uh, we kind of talked a little bit about the uh, the Enzo situation in the uh, the news uh, segment, but we did have the the big quote main event with <laughs> Enzo versus Callisto for the cruiserweight championship. I gotta say, um, th- this match being in a lumberjack match was so perfect because my uh, my girlfriend's friend was over and this match was on, and and she was like, "Huh?" Super confused. What I else? Like, I was like, "No, no, no, no." There's, they're not really lumberjacks out there, <laughs> and the look of disappointment on her face. <laughs> uh, what was it? Wasn't like, and wasn't like Booker on commentary talking about like he had, he was in a lumberjack <laughs> yes. match and had to dress up like a lumberjack. <laughs> oh, that's too good. Uh, but yeah, so what do you think? Callisto getting the win on Eddie Guerrero's birthday. Uh, I like it. I, 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 I'm not a fan of. Uh, of Enzo on top, cutting down all the cruiserweights every week. It doesn't, to me, it just, it, it, it just paints all the cruiserweights as bitches. You know, I just, I, I, and then. And it's the, the thing where he was thrown right into the top. He didn't have to work his way to anything. He didn't have to win any matches. He was just there to challenge Neville. But again, I think it's the also the story of 205 wasn't drawing, and here comes Enzo, and now it's it's uh, Main event all, all eyes this. all all eyes on on 205 live. Now uh, Enzo in the main event for three weeks, technically the quote unquote main event of Raw <laughs> for the past three weeks uh, hasn't ac- ac- uh, has not resulted in big third hour numbers for Raw, but that's pretty much what happens every week. So mm-hmm. you can't really blame Enzo for that anyway. But what are you, what are your thoughts on on the the title change, Taco? Because I know you're kind of more for this Enzo thing. But uh, what? um, I'm not mad that Callisto won it. It's a good spot. I just hope they have faith in him and you know give him at least a title reign with it longer than he had the U.S. title before. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's just kind of um interesting on where they can go with this because the whole Neville thing kind of you know is a kink in the armor. And you know, I, I was really hoping for him to bring that. Uh, I'm all. I'm, I'm the high king on the main roster. You know, there's some yeah. foods he could have, you know, been, he could have been the bad guy on there fighting for the U.S. title and or the Intercontinental, but... The um, Young Bucks already offered him a bullshit right. t-shirt on Twitter. <laughs> It'll, Neville will be fine. But, 
<laughs> See, I peg him as a chaos guy. That that certainly could be. <laughs> I, let's let's get it. Let's get him in, in Los Ingobernables. Let's, right, there's let's, possibilities let's here. Get Ingo, <laughs> See that? Let's get a Los Ingobernables Day UK going. That's what I want. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. It, it, it's pretty good. Let's just. Uh, I don't know where the fuck you can go with Enzo at this point. Like, I wasn't too. You know, I I wasn't high on him bringing down all the other guys. But at the same time, it's. It was getting them attention and, you know, getting them fired up. And, and that's, them... that's all Enzo has. Exactly. <laughs> his, his insults and talking shit. That's part of the business, he, he though. You get those guys that are just mouthpieces. But he can't bring it in the ring. It, it, it's just, it, I don't know. I, 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 know, I, th- yeah. I think we're looking, you know, like, as much as I love, like, high technical wrestling and the crazy spots and everything, yeah. some, you just sometimes you need a fucking ass clown running around there to, <laughs> you know, to fucking get that heat, get that attention. Yeah, get Like, yeah. people, like Mayweather, people don't pay $80 for a pay-per-view to see him win. No, they want to see him lose, but he fucking always wins. So that's right. why people keep paying so that's kind of you know the mindset they're trying to do with enzo here so that way when someone like um mustafa ali you know pins him or you know uh, davari maybe pins him and becomes champ boom that person's gonna be like fuck he did it oh Pat Callisto already did it so. yeah yeah <laughs> just we're past suddenly it. <laughs> yeah i bet here's the thing is i bet enzo get, gets it back probably pretty soon that's what so. i'm like hoping against like if you're gonna put put it on Callisto, this Keep it on him. I like that they went back to Kalisto's uh, old music, that new music that he had where it was just like, I, 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 know, I think he needs some fireworks or something with it because it was always just out of the blue and like, what's going on? Oh, no, <laughs> Russia's not attacking us. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, I, li- I, like the, I like the old one with the Lucha chant yeah. at the beginning. I thought, I thought that was a little bit better. So I like that they went back to that. Uh, what else? Oh, the uh, the Finn Bray Wyatt sister <laughs> oh Abigail. Oh my god, I forgot that, all about it. That was really bad. Uh, mm. the, 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 uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually watched the whole thing and my mouth was on the floor. It was way worse than your Bludgeon Brothers. At least that had a, a bit of comedy to it. <laughs> Bludgeon Brothers, <laughs> but that Bray Wyatt with the high voice and the veil and uh. the face paint. Ah, oh, God, that was bad. Oh. So the, the the only thing that was in uh, let's spin it. Let's get a little. Let's get a little positive. He's here. gonna be on stage, tucking it back, saying, "Would you fight me? <laughs> I fight me. I fight me good." <laughs> no, I like. I like. Okay, goodbye, I, Buzz. <laughs> okay, I don't. Uh, I don't like that Finn had to sell that it was kind of scary in his little interview uh, after the fact. I thought that was dumb, but I like that Finn alluded to the idea that he has to go somewhere beyond the demon and uh, you know himself or whatever. So this could be because like when he was Prince Devitt in Japan, occasionally he would do the face paint stuff, but it wasn't always the same. It wasn't mm. always the demon. So it could be some other you know. It could be a fucking dragon or something. I don't know. So I kind of, uh, I'm kind of intrigued at what Finn is going to do with it. Yeah. But other than that, I'm like, stop it. Hopefully, just, he can just, just, just stop it. It's just bad. Just hire the good brothers to come out and beat his ass. What does that mean? <laughs> and let's just let's just get the show on the that'd road. Be, that'd be let's good just too. get the show. I, I gotta go deeper than the demon. All right, I got some guys. Get the club together. I got some guys. <laughs> That's not a bad idea either. All right, let's move on. Let's talk some uh, Lucha Underground. Change the subject. (laughs) Again, we are a week behind on Lucha Underground, so we're going to be talking about Mm -hmm. Ultima Lucha Trace Part 2. So again, this is a four-part Ultima Lucha the part dose. Uh, uh, <laughs> series going on. Did you guys, either either of you get a chance I to, did. to check I it knew. out? So Okay, cool. So you got to remember right off the bat that Katrina ruined both Ultima Lucha chances for Ivelisse going into this week's episode. Also, Jeremiah Crane and Ivelisse are kind of a thing, but Crane is in love with Katrina, or... Uh, uh, Crane is in love with Katrina and Katrina is maybe in love with Mill but possibly someone else but they're definitely hinting heavily that uh, well obviously the Katrina Mill she just wants to suck his dick well the Katrina Mill Moritz storyline has been ongoing throughout the entire yep. Lucha Underground saga but Katrina has eluded that, that it might not be Mill that's the end game here with all the uh, magic and whatnot going on Crane uh, does break up with Ivelisse before her match tonight and calls her a bitch Ivelisse mm. super kicks Crane through a wall so girl, awesome uh, girl power there <laughs> then we had the unique
unique opportunity battle royal to start the show. Uh, Pimpinella Escarada makes uh, his or, or her return, eliminates himself <laughs> accidentally after having a nice run in the match. Comes down to PJ Black, Ricky Mundo, and the Mac. The uh, the Mac gets the win. Willie Mac, as he's known on the Indies. And uh, next, the the ultimate, the uh, unique opportunity is that next week he's going to get a trios title shot versus Pindar, Vibaro, and Drago. Uh, Dario gets to choose his partners, who just oh. went to war with each other: Killshot and Dante Fox. Ooh. So uh, God yeah, damn. Mac uh, teaming up with those two guys are going to be. It'll be interesting to see right what, after what these two look like uh, and how yeah. how long they. Uh, maybe spread these tapings out between when they taped these uh, these two matches. So, uh, very interesting there. Then, Ivalice versus Katrina. Uh, Katrina hits uh, hides in Dario's office after Ivalice attempts to rip Katrina's that top. That was nasty. Uh, then she busts multiple bo- bottles over Ivalice's head, uh, busting her open. Katrina goes for the magic rock, but uh, eats a spine buster. Then Ivalice gets the rock and hits her, and then hits her with a step-up DDT and gets the win. After the match, uh, Jeremiah Crane comes out and attacks Ivalice here on her uh, attacks her previously injured ankle with a hammer. <laughs> 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 then Katrina retrieves the magic stone. So this was a fun match between those two. It was nice to uh, have that storyline wrap up with Ivalice getting the oh. win, but Jeremiah Crane coming out and kind of tr- still trying to prove his love for Ivalice and going after the leg with the hammer. <laughs> the <match. laughs> then the uh, big main event, Phoenix versus Marty the Moth. This is Mask versus Hair. Marty the Moth pulls Mary Posa into a diving Phoenix early. Uh, she uh, I should put leaves a finger. I don't know what that means here. I forget. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> just chops off her finger and I, I just guess, leaves I, in the middle of the ring. Yeah, I guess I don't. Uh, Sacrifice. Oh, that, she, oh, that's what it was. Because because Marty the Moth pulled her into the diving phoenix, she decides to leave and gives Marty the Moth the finger. Oh. <laughs> that's what it was. Uh, Marty the Moth removes the turnbuckle pad and rips Phoenix mask, drops him onto the turnbuckle, and Phoenix bleeds and blood is pouring everywhere. Looks very disoriented in the match. A uh, very good sell job uh, mm-hmm. but, but, but for Phoenix there, but he was bleeding profusely. That, like, <laughs> that mask was red. Yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> it was, was a, bad. It was a crimson mask inside a mask. <clears throat> <laughs> Dying here. Uh <clears throat> Phoenix starts a comeback with a cutter on the apron. Then Melissa Santos is uh, is shocked. Uh, Vampiro plays cheerleader in the in the match. He's like running around outside the ring, getting the crowd hyped <laughs> up during the match. I thought it was uh, very cool to see him kind of running around. Marty the Moth gets a scissors from his lunchbox, <laughs> and then Melissa Santos pleads with Marty the Moth and kicks him in the balls, right in the nuts. Uh, where did that one go? There. It goes. Yeah, right in the nuts. <laughs> Uh, then it was Phoenix getting the win with a springboard 450 after Santos hits that low that low blow. After the match, Mariposa hits Marty the Moth with a chair and cuffs him to the uh, railing. Uh, um, uh, and again, I can't read my fucking writing there. <laughs> cuffs him to the railing, uh, and Phoenix and Santos uh, cut his hair. And so, uh, yeah, give him the haircut, bald Marty mm-hmm. the Moth. So uh, Phoenix getting the revenge. Happy endings for Melissa Santos and Phoenix. Uh, and a fun a fun main event. Yeah. Uh, with lots of blood and, and Ultima gore. Lucha Trace been fucking living up. Yeah, you know, it's it's hard to hard to top the Dante Fox and uh, kill shot match, uh, but this one was a lot of fun. And again, for the whole storyline that's been going on, yeah, and they're just t- getting Marty, you know, getting what he deserves finally after being fucking a creepy bastard this whole time. Exactly, exactly. And I love the fucking scissors out of the lunchbox mm-hmm. deal. That was a, just a lot of fun too. So, all right, let's uh, let's finish up the show and talk some NXT. Change the subject. NXT. <laughs> NXT this week, a uh, pretty uh, pretty solid uh, little mm-hmm. episode here. Uh, the beginning uh, part of the show, just a bunch of squash matches, pretty much, but we had a really nice main event. Unfortunately, we got distracted as we were watching it by some guy's T-shirt 
in the uh, in the audience. And we went. I, I attempted to rewind, fucked everything up. We ended up having to start over, but then uh, it jumped to the end of the match, and we got spoiled on the thing. Yeah, so, right at the finish. So that kind of sucked, but uh, that was my own fault for uh, for uh, screwing around Fucking there. Fucking Tommy. But uh, <sighs> a good main event. Andre, Andrade Cien Almas out there with Selena Vega taking on Johnny Gargano. Big rematch. Of course, uh, Almas winning the first one after the T-shirt distraction. Mm-hmm. And uh, we kind of expected uh, Johnny Gargano to kind of get his uh, revenge here. But it was kind of a little bit of the same story with uh, Gargano's got uh, Almas in the uh, Gargano escape late in the match. Got it locked in nice and tight. Vega takes off her jacket to reveal the DIY T-shirt. But mm-hmm. Johnny's like, no, it's not going to work. I'm just going to cinch this Ain't thing. Ain't for that. Just cinches the move in tighter, but uh, almost makes it to the ropes and uh, ends up getting the win after uh, the uh, minor distraction there. Awesome. Love this feud. So, but uh, really good match between those two. Hard hitting. Yeah. Back and forth. Uh, a lot They're of fun. fun to watch. Johnny Gargano's fucking dude on the Finn Balor abs program, I guess. Just yeah. Fucking <laughs> ripped. Great shape. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, other stuff from NXT, we're getting the qualifying matches for the uh, women's four-way match coming up at NXT TakeOver uh, Houston, I believe. Yes, TakeOver mm-hmm. Houston. So this one was Peyton Royce, Liv Morgan, and Nikki Cross. I think everybody kind of expected Nikki Cross to get the win here. Yeah, no, I did. But it was uh, it was Peyton Royce with the uh, spin heel kick and the Fisherman's Bridge after uh, after the Undisputed Era sent Tamira Conti out to interfere with uh, Nikki Cross. They, they send her out there to go directly after Nikki Cross, so kind of cementing this feud between Undisputed mm. Era and uh, and Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Sanity. Sanity. Yeah. So, but we are we're going to get that match next week between those two, and I'm thinking this is, of course, going to lead into th- these two teams going into war games uh, somehow. Oh. Uh, yeah, so it has to. That's probably what's going to be. But I will give there. you an update without I've... looking into spoilers. We haven't looked into other spoilers. I was telling Taco I watched a video they released it on Twitter that like Tanera Conti is going to have nothing to do with Undisputed. They literally just went, "You had a use, and it's done now. So we're go we're going this way." Yeah, that makes sense because. I- she came out where everybody's like, even though she was in the May Young Classic, I think everybody was like, who is this lady again? What, what, what are we doing here? But uh, so I kind of like that that idea that, that they're so they're, they're such evil bastards that they just, oh, yeah, come on, we'll, we'll have you do this thing. And then, yeah, you'll be with us. And then, no, we're good. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> go, go away now. So, yeah, I kind of I kind of like that. That aspect to it. So Peyton Royce getting the win there. She's going to be in the match with Kyrie Sane. Two more qualifiers uh, next week. Uh, I was surprised with this match, though. Like uh, for the ladies that were in it, I was kind of expecting just a triple quick triple threat match. Nikki Cross win next match. Let's go on. But no, like uh, um, yeah. Liv Morgan and um, Peyton Royce, they were trying shit, playing around, having fun. Like um, definitely. So you know some of the moves, like when they caught Nikki Cross, didn't really you know, come off well, but, you know, it was awesome to see that they were trying shit like that, and, you know, because they still are developing, so it was it was cool to see that, and, you know, they actually looked good in there. And uh, Nikki Cross is such a maniac in there. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's great. But, uh, yeah, uh, Liv Morgan's definitely showing a little bit of improvement in there, mm-hmm. and Peyton Royce is is is, is good and, and getting greater. Uh, yeah, she's <laughs> gotten better every week definitely, watching yeah. her. Leo Rush versus the Velveteen Dream. This is, of course, after Velveteen Dream interrupted what was supposed to be Leo Rush's debut versus um, uh, Ha Ha Clinton Dix. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Tommy uh, End. Alistair Black uh, last week or whatever. Uh, this was a fun match because, I mean, uh, yeah, Ve- yeah, Velveteen Dream got the win. It was kind of a squash match, but not really. Leo Rush looked good in the match, so... Did you have something to say? No, Joe? no, no. Just... I was making fun of Taco's microphone. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, Leo Rush looked good in, in this thing. Yeah, showing off his speed right off the bat, saying, "Hey, XD, this is what's up." Well, then you got that crowd riled up real fast. Yeah, yeah big time. Uh, he win- Dream wins with the purple rain ma- rainmaker <laughs> after the big Death Valley bomb. So, I, 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 Velveteen's offense here is 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 looking decent as well, too. Yeah, I liked what he did too, doing it from um, jumping up from the second rope to up to the third rope, and yeah. then doing his. Like it was just all fluid, and it was an awesome way to do that elbow drop. Again, he's getting just more comfortable every single week in the ring, and that's going to help just wrestling random guys. Honestly, even just Aleister Black once and he gets that. I like. Th- 
this kind of version of a squash match too, where the little guy or whatever the guy that's not supposed to win, mm-hmm. he's a name, but he's still like he gets that he gets his offense in that gets him over, and I like that because yeah. it's like I'm looking forward to seeing him now in a more competitive matchup. Uh, for instance, like the next match, Lars Sullivan versus Danny Birch, the mm-hmm. same exact story there. So, uh, uh, you know, Lars Sullivan, a big, obnoxious, gross guy, <laughs> who everybody he, he's getting over with just being that big, gross, he's so fucking haggard. <laughs> yes, yes. And then Danny Birch just slapping the shit out of him, but just not being enough. So, but then again, slap duck, slap duck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, that's the thing is Danny Birch is over enough. So now I want to see Danny Birch versus Leo Rush or something like that. Yeah, you know that would be something cool but uh again i like this style of squash where it's not just uh you know there, there's some hope that this other guy might have a chance uh, right. so uh but then we got your traditional squash match with the pre uh, street profits in there with just a couple of guys so i, I like <laughs> i like that aspect of it too look and montez ford is is the best part of the street profits oh, absolutely it, that other guy stirring the pot or whatever, he can go to hell. <laughs> but uh, Montez Ford, he like hey. at one point he just starts freaking out and running around acting like a maniac, <laughs> getting into people's faces at ringside. It was great. Uh, and then after the match, after the Street Profits win, the way uh, Ford just like kicks the other guy out of the wing, like, out of the ring, yeah, and, like, bicycling on the floor or whatever. Uh, lots of fun there. I think he's married to that uh, Bianca Belair chick. Oh, okay, cool, cool. So all kinds of oh, cool, he's got to have a lot of energy then. All kinds of right. swag there. Uh, so we're going to get Drew McIntyre in an interview next week. Ooh. Exclusive. And uh, like we said, Sanity versus the Undisputed Era in a six-man battle. And it's going to be Ember Moon versus Ruby Riot versus Sonya Deville be fun. in the, uh, the, uh, the the next qualifier. So that should, should be Should have heard us trying match. to think of her name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, yeah. In my notes, I, I missed the part where they, they had the name up there. And I'm like going to write down Sonya Deville. I'm like, what's, her, what's the MMA gimmick's name again? Uh. <laughs> it took us like a few minutes to try to figure it out. Oh, yeah, Sonya Deville. But that should be a fun match. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. So let's wrap things up here with the tweet of the week. Now it's time for the WWE tweet of the week. This week it's going to come from Big E. You can follow Big E on Twitter at WWE Big E, and he's re- uh, he's responding to a tweet about uh, a Kellogg's cereal. Uh, what is it? Uh, Unicorn Fruit, Fruit Loops. Loops, and it looks it looks basically just like a Bootyos <laughs> box. Uh, so this guy tweets it at Big E. Big E tweets at WWE. Do you have any more cease and desists handy? So yeah, that's the there. <laughs> All right, like I said, uh, we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk. Uh, we're gonna talk. Uh, whoops! Welcome. <laughs> I'm not t- welcome, guys. <laughs> hey. Let's get this podcast going. Believe we're gonna it. talk about Hell in a Cell. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not editing it again. Uh, uh, yeah, if you want to hear us talk New Japan and Ring of Honor, we're gonna record Strong Honor right after this. Going to talk uh, King of Pro Wrestling going into the Tokyo Dome uh, coming up later this year. So lots of big angles to talk about there. Ring of Honor TV back finally uh, following up the uh, Death Before Dishonor pay-per-view from a couple of weeks ago. And we got a preview of the big, huge show coming up in Chicago as well as the big AAW shows that I'm going to. A big two-day tournament. So we'll talk about that on Strong Honor. So follow this show at BPW Podcast on Twitter. Facebook.com slash Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. Email the show, Best Pro Wrestling Podcast at gmail.com. And go to Best Pro Wrestling Podcast.com, the website for this show, Strong Honor, and all of your Best Pro Wrestling Podcast needs. Taco, where can people find you? Ooh. You can follow me on Snapchat, Twitter, at HGREV Taco. And you can follow me, Joe, at Joe BPWP. <laughs> That's at Joe, Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. That's going to do it for this week. Check out Strong Honor and check us out next week here on The Best Pro Wrestling Podcast. Bye. <laughs> Shut up. What else? Well, what else? I'm gonna write the nuts. What else? WWE, do you have any more of that cease and desist handy? I think I fucked it up again, too. One more time. I'll give you a handy. (laughs) (laughs) And, and.